Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing the concept of cost of capital in financial management. What is capital? Capital is defined differently in different contexts. Here, in the cost of capital, the capital is defined as the total long-term funds used for the purpose of business. What are all the components of capital? Equity share capital, preference share capital, debentures, all types of debts taken from the financial institutions and banks, and even the retained earnings is formed part of the capital. Cost of capital is normally expressed in percentage. This cost of capital is also known as cutoff rate, harder rate, or the minimum rate of return. Now, let us check what is the significance of cost of capital. Cost of capital helps the management in taking the right decisions. 1. Evaluation of the projects. When we are evaluating the new projects, we have to use the correct cost of capital. So for each project, the cost of capital will be different and the future cash flows should be discounted by using these cash flows to arrive at a correct decision. Second one, appraisal of the ongoing projects. The projects should be appraised with respect to the cost of capital of that particular project to arrive at the profitability of the project. Third one, designing of optimum credit policy. When we are deciding how much credit is to be allowed to the customers, the cost of investing money in the customers is to be compared with benefit from the additional sales. So here also we are using the cost of capital to arrive at a correct decision. Cost of capital can be explicit or implicit. Explicit cost of capital means it is a real and obvious cash flow. There is a real cash flow out of the business. Let us take the example of a bank loan. When we are taking a bank loan, we need to pay interest and that is an outflow from the business. This is a real outflow and this is called the explicit cost of capital. On the other hand, when we are using, a mon using money which is already deposited in with the bank for the purpose of the business, we need not pay any interest but we are losing interest because we are withdrawing money from the bank. This cost is an indirect cost of the business. This is called the implicit cost. Implicit cost may also known as the cost of opportunity lost. To be considered while calculating the cost of capital are first one is the source of capital and second one is the reciprocal payment made to the supplier of capital. Now let us check the cost of capital from the different sources. The debt holders or the dependent holders will not enjoy any ownership in the company but they have a charge on the company for their interest. Whether the company is doing profit or loss, the dependent holders or the debt holders has a right to get their interest. While evaluating the debt, there is two points to be noted. In the case of dependent job, the interest is paid on the face value of the dependent job. According to the market condition or the standing of the company, the deposit can be issued at a premium or at a discount. But remember, the interest is always paying on the face value of the debenture only. And another important concept while deciding the cost of capital of the debt is the concept of tax liability. When we are paying interest on debt, debt is a tax deductible expense or we can charge the interest on the profit and loss account. As a result of this, the tax will come down. This is called the tax shield. We will discuss with an example to understand better. Let us consider the example of A limited and B limited, both of them having an EBIT of 100 rupees. A is a full equity company and B having some debt in its capital structure. So the interest of B is 30 rupees. So the profit before tax will work out 100 rupees for A limited and 70 rupees for B limited. Tax at 30% for A limited is 30 and for B limited is 21. And the profit after tax 70 rupees for A limited and 49 rupees for B limited. Now, when we check or when we compare the profit after tax for A limited and B limited, we can see only a difference of 21 rupees. But the interest paid for B limited was 30 rupees. Why this difference? This is the concept of tax shield. Just because B limited paid rupees 30 as interest, they got a reduction in the tax. The reduction in the tax is 30% of the rupees 30 paid as interest that works out to be 9. And the difference in the profit after tax is 
21 rupees which is 30 into 1 minus tax percentage tax percentage is 30 and 1 minus tax percentage is 70 30 into 70 percentage is 21 that is the equation so the tax gain is 9 and the difference in the profit after tax is 21 that 21 plus 9 is 30 so we can conclude that the tax savings is the interest into tax rate that is 30 into 30 percent and the profit after tax or the cost will be interest into 1 minus t that is 30 into 1 minus 30 percentage that is 30 into 70 percentage 21. Now let us find out what is the cost of irredeemable debentures. Irredeemable debentures are those debentures which are not repayable after a definite period. The cost of irredeemable debentures is denoted by KD. KD is equal to I into 1 minus T divided by NP. Here I is the interest amount. It is the amount actually paid. It is not a percentage of the interest. T is the tax rate and net proceeds is the amount collected by distributing the debentures or issuing the debentures. The net proceeds, the amount received from the debenture holders, we have to reduce the cost of the issue. The flotation cost we have to reduce and the net amount available to the company is taken as net proceeds. If the debenture is already issued, the market price is taken as the net proceed. Let us take a small example to understand the concept here. Face value of a debenture is rupees 1000, tax 30%, debenture interest is 12%, flotation cost 2%. Find the cost of debenture if issued 1 at par, 2 at a premium of 5% and 3 at a discount of 5%. As we discussed earlier, the cost of debenture is equal to I into 1 minus T divided by net proceeds. Here in this case, interest is equal to 1000 into 12%, that is 120. T is given as 30%. Net proceeds, 1000 is the face value and 2% is the flotation cost. So 1000 minus 20, that is 980, issued at par. So the formula comes to 84 divided by 980, that is 8.57%. If the issue is at premium, only the net proceed will change. All the other things, interest and tax rate will remain the same. So, in this case, the formula will come 84 divided by 1030. 1000 plus 50 is the premium and 20 is the rotation cost. 1000 plus 50 minus 20. 1030 and the cost of debenture works out to be 8.16 percentage. If issued at a discount, the formula KD is equal to I into 1 minus T divided by net proceeds. Here again, 120 into 1 minus 30 percentage divided by 1000 minus 50 minus 20. 50 is the discount and 20 is the flotation cost. It works out 84 divided by 930 and 9.03 percentage is the cost of debenture. Comparing the above three cost of debentures, we can see that the cost is minimum when we are issuing at a premium and the maximum at when we are issuing at a discount. The reason being we are paying interest on the face value and the same interest is paying on all situations. So when we are receiving more money our cost of capital will be the minimum and when we are receiving less money our cost of capital will be high. Now let us check what is the cost of a redeemable debenture. Redeemable debentures are those debentures which are redeemable after a fixed period of time. If the net proceeds and the redemption value is different there will be a gain or loss in the redeemable debentures. That is the difference between a redeemable debenture and irredeemable debenture as far as the cost of debenture is concerned. So let us see what is the formula for finding out the cost of redeemable debenture. Cost of redeemable debenture is equal to I into 1 minus T plus RV minus NP by N all divided by RV plus NP divided by 2 where I is the interest amount, NP is the net amount available or the market value. RV is the redemption value and N is the life of debenture. If the debenture is issued at a discount of 5% that is 95 and it is redeemable after 5 years at face value, then redeemable value is 100 and net proceeds or the issue price is 95. So RV minus NP is equal to 
100 minus 95 divided by n. n is the number of years of the life of the different job that is 5. 100 minus 95 divided by 5 that is 1. So along with the interest after tax this 1 rupee is to be added as a cost per year. Now let us have a look at the cost of preference share capital. First irredeemable preference share capital. Kp is equal to Pd divided by P0. Pd means preference dividend and P0 is the market value of the preference shares. Here as we know preference dividend is not a tax deductible expense and the term 1 minus t is, is absent as we compare it with the cost of debenture. So the other things remaining the same. And the redeemable preference shares Kp is equal to Pd plus Rp minus Np by N the all divided by Rv plus Np divided by 2. This is also same in line with the cost of dependencies. The only difference being the absence of the term 1 minus t because the preference dividend is not a tax deductible expense. Now we will discuss the cost of equity share capital. Whether it is a loan from a financial institution or a bank or a debenture or a preference share all comes with a predefined cost. In the case of equity share capital, there is no such predefined cost or the equity does not warrant any fixed payment. So it may feel that the equity share capital does not carry any cost, but that is not true. The return of equity share capital determines the market value of the share and it is very important. The market value is a function of the expectation of the equity shareholders and what he get from the share. To make the point clear, if the dividend is rupees 2 and the expectation of the shareholder is 10%, the market value will be rupees 20, 2 divided by 10%. If the dividend increases, the market value increases and dividend decreases, the market value decreases. Cost of equity is always high compared to the debt. Reason for the same are, debt has got a tax shield effect. And the second one, since the equity shareholders exposed to higher risk, they require higher return. Debt holders are assured of a particular percentage of interest and since the shareholders take a risk in investing, they expect a better return than the debt holders. Here the equity shareholders, instead of taking the route of debt, they are going for the equity share capital, expecting a much better return than the debt holders. That's why the cost is high in the case of the equity share capital. Since the cost of equity capital is the expectation of the shareholders, there is many interpretations are possible. So let us see what are the different methods of finding the cost of capital. Unlike the debt cost, it is not a single or a uniform formula. There are many formulas for finding out the cost of equity share capital. Dividend price approach. Under this method, the assumption is that the market price of a share is the present value of its future dividends. And the dividend price approach has two approaches. One is the constant dividend and second one is the growth approach. Formula for the dividend price approach under the constant dividend method is Ke is equal to D divided by P0 where D is the expected dividend and P0 is the market value of equity. And Ke is the cost of equity. When we are investing in a share at market price after dividend, we can expect a dividend only after one year. The next year dividend is normally termed as D1. But here it is a constant dividend since D0 and D1 are the same. That's why we are using D in the formula. If we assume that the dividend is growing at the rate of G, the formula will become Ke is equal to D1 by P0 plus G. Where D1 is the next dividend that is D0 into 1 plus G. And G is the growth rate. In the case of an issue of a new equity share, we have to go back to the concept of net proceeds. If there is a flotation cost, we have to reduce the flotation cost from the market price. So the net proceeds we have to take in instead of P0. In the earnings price approach, the earnings is taken instead of the dividend. The argument is that whether it is distributed or not, the amount is due to the shareholders and they are concerned with the earnings of the company rather than the dividend. So in the formula for the dividend growth, in the EPS approach, the D will be replaced by E and all other things remaining the same and it, need, it uh, doesn't need an elaborate discussion. 
another method of finding the cost of equity share capital is realized yield method according to this approach the average rate of return realized in the past few years is regarded as the expected return in the future even though it is simple the assumptions are unrealistic that is the risk faced by the company remains the same shareholders expect the same rate of return reinvestment opportunity cost is same as the realized yield if the earnings do not remain stable this method cannot be applied another method of finding the cost of equity share capital is the capital asset pricing model popularly known as capm this method discusses the relationship between the risk and return of securities the risk are of two types systematic risk and unsystematic risk unsystematic risk is a company specific risk this can be eliminated by investor by diversifying his portfolios this is an avoidable risk systematic risk is on the other hand is a market specific risk which means all companies are affected by this this cannot be eliminated by diversification by the investor examples of systematic risk are inflation war government policy international events which the investor has no control over it formula to find out the cost of equity share capital under capm method is ke is equal to rf plus beta into rm minus rf where rf is the risk free rate of return rm is the rate of return at the market beta is the beta coefficient beta of an investment or a stock is a measure of its volatility of returns relative to the entire market a company with a high beta has greater risk and also greater expected return beta means if beta is 1.5 if the market is moves upward 1 percentage the particular stock will move 1.5 percent upwards and vice versa if the market goes down by 2 percentage the stock will go down by 3 percentage that is 2 into 1.5 percentage so the beta is the relative measure of volatility in comparison with the entire market now let us discuss is there any cost for the retained earnings when the company retained earnings the shareholders are deprived of the dividend so the cost of retained earnings is the opportunity cost of dividend foregone by the shareholders cost of retained earnings is nothing but the expected return of shareholders from the investment in the shares of the company so the cost of retained earnings is same as the cost of equity but when we are comparing the cost of equity by way of issuing shares the for the retained earnings there is no rotation cost so the difference between the cost of equity share capital and cost of retained earnings is the difference in rotation cost that is when we are calculating the net proceeds in the new issue we are reducing the rotation cost but in the case of retained earnings no need to reduce the rotation cost that is only difference of calculation in the cost of retained earnings and the cost of equity that's all for now hope to see you soon through another video please let me know your comments thanks for watching